This is the High School Football America podcast for August the 27th, 2023. I'm Jeff Fisher. The High School Football America podcast is brought to you by GameStrack, America's premier sideline instant replay system with outstanding reliability. It has faster speed than Huddle's sideline, plus GameStrat has awesome customer service. Find out why so many coaches are making the switch. It's usually because GameStrat is there for them when they need them. And they have plans priced right for every coach's budget. And if you mention High School Football America when you get that demo, they will give you a High School Football America friends and family discount. To get a demo, go to GameStrat.com or click on the GameStrat banner ad located on every page of HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com. Well, I wrote it on HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com early last week. And I said, you know, even though it's, depending how you break it out, it, it's either the third week of high school football, if you count going back to when Alaska and Hawaii opened up at the beginning of the month, or the second uh, since, you know, Texas and Florida got into the mix this week. We're going to call it the third one. But I believed at the beginning of the weekend that it was going to have the greatest impact on the 2023 High School Football America National Championship chase. Entire weekend has been packed with huge games, separating the uh, contenders from the pretenders with uh, four big head-to-head matchups in the top 25. Here's an amazing number. Well, I thought it was amazing when I started laying down the schedule for the week. In the HSFA 300, there were less than 150 games because some states haven't started yet, like Louisiana, and you've got uh, uh, Catholic Memorial from Massachusetts not starting until the 7th. But for all intents and purposes, we had about 140 games uh, this past weekend, and 57 of them, 57 of those games were head-to-head matchups inside our top 300. It's been so much fun to watch and so many great, great games on Flow Football and on ESPN. And and there's still a game to go yet today as we've got uh, number 11, uh, St. Edward out of Ohio, the two-time reigning Division I champ, waiting to take on uh, number 30 Good Council out of the always brutal Washington Catholic Athletic Conference. That game will be on ESPN at one o'clock. But, uh, and, and by the way, uh, you know, we always let out our rankings on Sunday. They're going to come out a little bit later because of that game today. But uh, early this evening, we will be uh, announcing the, uh, the new High School Football America 300 that's powered by NFL Play Football. Now, let's take a back, look back at some of the, the big games this weekend. Uh, one and two pick up wins over ranked teams. But when it comes to the style points, I think number two, St. John Bosco, our defending national champs, uh, get a little bit more style than uh, Modern Day, which uh, traveled to Utah. Uh, Modern Day roared out to a 35-0 lead last night in Utah. Never looked back on the way to a uh, 48-14 win over number 221 Bingham. Up next for the 2-0 Monarchs is Georgia's Creekside, ranked number 123 in the latest national rankings. And Again, new ones coming out tonight, Sunday evening. Uh, In one of the best games of the Broward County National Football Showcase, and by the way, there were a lot of good ones, seven big games, uh, 10 teams from the the top 300 involved, and uh, 10 of those uh, in the top 25. By the way, if you missed our uh, chat with Dr. Kevin Perry, the co-founder of the Broward County National Football Showcase that came out earlier this week, Uh, Go back into our archives at HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com where everything is free. We are the land of the the free content at HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com. So in the big game, uh, boy, St. John Bosco looked so, so, so good. Uh, Extending their win streak against out-of-state opponents to 16 straight by beating number six St. Thomas Aquinas. Aquinas looking for its fifth straight Florida State championship. The last time that Bosco Bosco lost uh, to an out-of-state opponent was in 17, and that was when St. Thomas Aquinas beat him, also on national television by a 9-3 count in overtime. So Bosco making its case for uh, the top spot in the High School Football America 300, powered by NFL Play Football, and it is powered with our proprietary 
algorithm. So uh, Bosco now 2-0. Uh, next up, they go back home, and they will take on Friendship Collegiate from Washington, D.C. Uh, next weekend. Another big game in the uh, Broward County National Football Showcase, number 16 American Heritage out of Plantation. Uh, they took the third uh, top 25 head-to-head -head matchup in that event. No problems with number 19 St. John's College High School out of D.C., also part of the uh, Washington Catholic Athletic Conference, the cadets having won the last two uh, championships in that very tough conference. And then there was IMG Academy. Uh, obviously, uh, they, you know, the teams that can't find anybody, the good teams around America, you know, they're scheduling the IMGs because nobody wants to play them. So uh, St. Joseph's Prep out of Pennsylvania, seven state titles uh, over the last decade. And the Hawks uh, had a little bit of a home field advantage there. Uh, I watched the game on ESPN. Uh, the, the Hawk uh, faithful were out in four. IMG number five, St. Joe's Prep going into it. IMG gets out to a 17 nothing lead. And then in the end, they kind of had to hang on, uh, taking a 17-14 victory. The Ascenders, they're going to uh, keep on the road. They beat uh, Lipscomb Academy, Academy a two-time uh, defending Tennessee State champ to open the season. Then they beat the defending 6A champ, uh, St. Joseph's Prep Hawks, last night. Next up, the four-time 7A champs in Alabama as the Ascenders uh, travel to Alabama to take on number 15 Thompson, which uh, opened with a win this weekend as they downed uh, Opelika. So, man, what a great, great day of high school football yesterday. Uh, let's take a back, look back at some of the other games. Uh, the uh, Nike Football Classic uh, in Beaverton, Oregon. Uh, Gorman making its case for why at number three they stand a real good shot to win a national championship. They routed number 74, Long Beach Poly from California, 60-15. to 15. How good are the Gales? We're going to find out this week when they take on number nine, Miami Central. Uh, Miami Central has won uh, you know, three straight titles, and uh, they did not play this weekend. They had a bye. Central having a lot of problems finding games. Now, in Texas, there was a battle of defending state champs when Duncanville took on South Oak Cliff. Duncanville, number eight in the preseason, High School Football America 300. They stayed there through last week's first in-season 300. Uh, not very many problems with number 90, South Oak Cliff, as the uh, Panthers win 34 to 13. Uh, there was a good game, uh, another good game on Friday in the Broward County event. Uh, it was a battle of Gibbons, uh, two-time defending Florida State champ Cardinal Gibbons, number 24 in the HSFA 300, coming from behind to uh, beat North Carolina's Cardinal Gibbons in the last minute by a score of 28 to 21. Uh, another ESPN game that, uh, boy, this one was fun to watch Friday night, defending Alabama 6A champ Sarah Lynn, ranked number 83 in America, and will move up because they needed overtime, and they beat two-time reigning Tennessee Division II AA champ Lipscomb Academy by a score of 31 to 30. And then uh, on, on Thursday, there were a couple of upsets. Uh, i got to be honest, I was surprised by both of these outcomes. But, you know, Florida flexing its muscles on Thursday at the Broward County National Football Showcase in South Florida as two of the Sunshine State teams took down nationally ranked Georgia teams. Monarch from Florida roared back from a 42-30 fourth quarter deficit, and they beat Cedar Grove by a score of 50-42. to Cedar Grove came into the game number 67. And number 57, Milton from Georgia, lost to Western 14-10. Uh, to 10. Virginia Tech recruit uh, Davey Belfort threw for 129 yards, rushed for 43, ran, 43, and ran for a touchdown in a game that was televised on Flow Football. All of the games that were on Flow this past weekend can uh, be watched again if you missed any of them because there was a lot of football to watch. Trust me, a lot of, a lot of games across Flow and ESPN, but uh, on Flow they rebroadcast them because Become a subscriber to Flow Football. Go to flowfootball.com. All of those uh, games um, that are on flow that are on Flow are uh, created by our good friend uh, Joe Maimon, who uh, goes out there and, and helps teams find opponents. Teams that uh, struggle to find opponents, he helps them find them, and then a lot of those games end up 
on Flow Football. A uh, couple of other games that we'll take a look at here before we say goodbye on this uh, High School Football America podcast. Number four, Buford. Uh, they open with that solid win over uh, St. Francis. Uh, St. Francis came into the season number three. They shut them out 18 nothing last week. Then the Wolves traveled up the road to North Carolina to Charlotte, and then they struggled in a 10-7 win against number 127 Mallard Creek. So it will be interesting to see how that outcome affects Buford as the new rankings come out. Uh, don't want to forget about uh, the other big one on uh, national television yesterday. Speaking of St. Francis, they're now 0-2. And, and folks, uh, we've been talking about this all year long. Don't worry about that. They play one of the toughest schedules in the nation. They lost to Buford, and then yesterday they lost in the Broward County event. Uh, They lost to, they they, they had a lead at halftime, 14-6. On number 14, Chaminade Madonna, uh, the Panthers fell from 3 to 7 in the latest rankings. They're probably going to tumble a little bit more after uh, dropping uh, the, the game yesterday as uh, Chaminade Madonna outscored them after the halftime, a 29 nothing, picking up a 35 to 14 victory in that one. Uh, another big game that was on Thursday. Uh, Columbus out of Miami, number 12 in the preseason rankings, and they held there through the first set of rankings. Uh, They beat Clearwater Academy International, a private school, by a score of 28-21, so that's going to help the explorers there. Uh, I think the, I don't know if we want to call it the biggest upset, but I, I'm, I'm going to call it pretty darn close to being the uh, the biggest upset of the week. Uh, number 40, uh, Venice of Florida, uh, reigning state champ, uh, losing to Armwood by a score of 34 to 25. Armwood, a very good program, so uh, nothing there to sneeze at, but uh, Venice is going to fall in the latest rankings that come out on Sunday. Uh, Dutch Fork uh, started at number 11, lost to Colquitt County from uh, Georgia last week. The Silver Foxes losing another one, so they're really going to start tumbling here. Uh, the, the powerful 5A program lost to number 262 Spartanburg, 17 6. A Dutch Fork entered the game ranked uh, number 37 in the High School Football America 300. Another game that caught my eye, uh, DeMatha out of Maryland, out of that tough Washington Catholic Athletic Conference. A very uh, impressive, uh, solid win over number 54, Springfield, Ohio, 35-7. Springfield was ranked number uh 54 in the rankings coming in. Another big Florida battle that uh, will uh, shape this week's rankings. Uh, Coco, uh, number 45, uh, Nipping Jones from Orlando, Florida, 20 to 20 in Illinois East St. Louis another one of those teams that's not afraid to play great out of state opponents they took on number 95 Mount Carmel out of Chicago the caravan nipping the Flyers number 47 coming into the game by a score of 36 to 33. So there's a look at uh, some of the big games this weekend. All you have to do is go to highschoolfootballamerica.com. We've got all of the uh, top 300 games there for you. Again, a reminder, one more game to go this weekend, and then we'll release uh, one more game in the top 300, I should say, and then we'll release the national rankings early this evening. Uh, number 11, uh, St. Edward, you know, trying to improve that ranking when they take on number 30, Good Counsel. And uh, St. Edward is just a really, really great program. Last week, they beat um, three-time defending uh, 6A champ in Indiana, uh, Center Grove. They uh the Eagles, again, one of those teams not afraid to play anybody at all. The High School Football America podcast is brought to you by NFL Play Football. Coaches, don't forget to check out playfootball.nfl.com for some great resources to help you improve in the coaching profession. I'm Jeff Fisher, and you've been listening to the High School Football America podcast.